This is a brief training video on using the Douglas machine pan washer. And basically when you come in in the morning, the machine should be drained and ready for startup. Being drained, this one has already been filled, but when you come in, you should see two flashing colons. This shows that the machine has control power to it. One of the first things you would want to do would be to go over to here, turn clockwise the drain valve to make sure it's closed. Then you would turn on the power and the machine would begin to fill. After it fills, it reaches the wa low water probe the heaters would come on. We've already prepared this one, but you want to wait until you have at least 150 degrees on the wash temperature and over 180 degrees Fahrenheit on the rinse temperature. While that's heating, you can take the time to load the machine and the proper way of loading it, Doug's gonna put some pans in here would be to place the pans so that the side you've used, the dirty side of the pan, is facing the wash arm hubs. You will get more power from the lower arms than the upper arms. As you can see, this side of the pan is facing down to the wash arms. Now he's going to put one in wrong. Fits very well. But at this point, we have the back side of the pan facing the wash arms. You're not going to get as clean. You will get some water from the top, but most of your power is going to come from the bottom wash arms. So this one is incorrect. This one is correct. You want to keep the dirty side of the pan toward the wash arms. Then you close the machine. After it's filled and your water has reached the desired temperatures, and select a cycle, either short cycle, medium cycle, or long cycle. The short cycle should be at least four minutes, the medium cycle six minutes, and the long cycle eight minutes. You will see a countdown while the unit is running. You will also see lights telling you what part of the cycle it is in. You have the wash is on for the entire wash period. The rinse is on for the 30 second high temperature sanitation rinse. And then the unload light will come on. When the unload light comes on, you can unload it at that point, but we generally suggest you wait until all until that light is out, allowing most of the steam to get out of the unit so you're putting less steam into the, your working area. And this will count down. We're at three minutes almost. We cut away for a few moments just to save you guys some time. As you can see, the wash is cutting down. It's now stopped. The pressure has dropped. The rinse light comes on, you will have a 30 second high temperature sanitizing rinse. That's why your temperature needs to be at least 180 degrees Fahrenheit for your rinse cycle. The rinse light is on, the timer is counting down, and I don't know if uh, the microphone will pick it up, but at zero you will hear a short beep. The unload light will come on. At this point, you can unload the machine. We do suggest, however, that you wait until the unload light goes out so that a lot of the steam or most of the steam can go up the stack and be exhausted from the work area. Also, if there is a quick reference over here on your side of the machine, that lists the control panel layout if there's any questions. 
There's procedure for daily startup. There's a procedure for daily shutdown. So everything that you need should be here with the machine at this time. We are almost to the point where you'll see the unload light go out. And as I said, most of the steam should be extracted at that point. The unload light is out, the counter is at zero, you can now proceed to unload the machine. Thank you. At this point, we're going to do the cleaning of the machine. We open it up, our pans are clean, and this would be... You'd want to check and see how dirty your water is. I can't tell you how many wash loads you're going to be able to do. It's going to depend on what you put in the unit. When you reach a point where you cannot see through, to some extent, the water, it needs to be drained and refilled. We're now going to go into the cleaning of the machine, however, and to make it easier, Weight-wise, we're taking out the individual components. Everything does just slide out. You would then close the machine, turn the power off. No display other than the two colons means that, that the power is off to the working components of the machine. Now you would reach through here, turn counter clockwise and open the drain to let the unit drain. It would and will be warm inside. Uh, it's going to take a few minutes to drain, but you have wash arms in here. You need to check all of your wash arms, the jets in there, to see if there's anything blocking these jets. If it blocks your jets, it will cause an increase in the pressure as the unit is washing, and you will not get proper pressure to the dishes that are in here, so they may not be as clean as possible. Okay. Our water is draining down now. My suggestion is to take out the pans, the uh, main filters, and take them over to a sink and clean. Then there is the main filter, which would also come out and be taken over to the sink and clean. At this point, the machine is ready to be cleaned. We would take the wash down hose from the side of the machine and spray down the inside of the machine. Paying careful attention to the water level probe, the temperature sensor, and the temperature thermometer. One of the biggest things to keep clean is the water level, low water level probe. If grease gets on this, you can get a path from the probe to ground and the machine will operate without water in it because it thinks that there is water in it because there's a path from the end of this probe to ground. So at this point, Doug's going to demonstrate uh, proper cleaning of that area using the Scotch-Brite pad to make sure that the, all three of the probes are clean. And then he will use a brush to make sure that the heating elements themselves are clean. suggestion at this point would be if you see something obstructing 
the wash arm, the rinse jets. The wash arms can be individually removed. You can use something to poke through there and then remove the end cap and rinse out the arm. Just make sure you put the end caps back on before reinstalling the wash arm. Another thing would be when you ch to check this when you're starting up to make sure that the end caps are in place. That the wash arms are locked in. You would again spray this out to get rid of any residue that's left from cleaning it. Make sure the filters are back in place. Doug's going to hand them to me now. Big one first. And this one is a little unwieldy, but it's not hard, it's not heavy. And then the individual parts for double filtration. At this point, you're ready to reload the machine, start it up. I would suggest that at the end of the day, when you reach this point, that you not fill the machine because it's going to be a lot more energy efficient to fill the machine in the morning and have it heat up with hot water in it rather than trying to heat cold water. So I would not fill the machine until the morning until you're ready to use it. Thank you.